I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn a boring and lifeless sound, like my voice, into a beautiful, lush soundscape. I use a bunch of these techniques in me and my friend Hawk's new song, Vitreous, which is out now on Bitbird. You can check out the full song by clicking the link below. Anyways, let's get started. <laughs> First off, the kind of reverb you use actually matters, and in my book, nothing beats good old Valhalla Shimmer. It's only 50 smackers, and it's perfect for creating super lush, ambient soundscapes. Oh. Wowzers. And if you don't want to shell out 50 smackers for Shimmer, they make a free alternative called Supermassive, which sounds pretty good. Uh, especially if you go to one of the reverb presets, it's pretty awesome. Okay, now that you got yourself a decent reverb, next thing to play with is some kind of grain delay. Basically, you slap it on the track you want, maybe put it before all this hoot and nanny, turn the pitch all the way up, so it's re-pitching everything up an octave. Very scary, sounds like Derek's uh, childhood, so let's turn down the frequency turn up the spray, and then just play with the dry wet and the feedback to taste. Oh, so beautiful. Now, of course, if you wanna lay down some dough, there's a couple other granulizer type effects out there that can expand on this idea. The one I actually used for this song was the Blee Ass Granulizer. Sounds really sick, especially on this preset called Multibus Dream. Sounds like this. So here it's actually pitching the grains both up and down by octaves. Super incredible. Another great option is Fragments. This one's absolutely insane. Check that out. Holy shit. Okay, so you got your reverb, you got your crazy ass granulizer. What is next? Well, to add some extra movement to the sound, I really like to use tape emulation. Check this out. I have a handy dandy plugin called Sketch Cassette that I use a ton. It's a bunch of tape lo-fi type effects all in one, and I really like the dropouts feature. Basically, if you crank the depth, width, and intensity, it kind of creates this randomized panning effect that adds a lot of fragility and movement to the sound. Of course, you can also add that classic pitch wobble. Holy shit. Now, if you don't want to shell out the 30 smackers it takes to get this plugin, you can create a similar effect using just stock Ableton stuff. So for the pitch wobble, I just like to use the chorus ensemble on the vibrato setting. Oh, Jesus, come on, Uncle Joe, you can't, you had one too many again. All right, well, let's turn the amount down, crank the rate up. I actually like to use two of these in tandem. I'll duplicate the chorus ensemble. I'll have the first one be very subtle and fast, and the second one be real slow and just a little bit more obvious. It's also nice to turn up the warmth on both of these to add a little bit of saturation and uh, classic distortion there. And then finally, for the randomized dropouts thing, you can create a similar effect using auto pan. Basically, you crank the amount up, you change it to the sample and hold shape, Turn the width all the way up and take a listen. Holy shit. Now here's without the effects here. Oh, so boring. And now with them. Ooh, just that little bit of extra movement to bring the sound to life. Wowzers. All right, so my last tip for creating super lush ambient soundscapes is using a plugin called Pitch Map. Basically, this thing is auto-tune on steroids. Check it out. Here I have a vocal. I keep on running back to you. Sounds terrible, but let's put pitch map on it and see what happens. I keep on running back to you. Sounds incredible. Basically, what's happening is that this keyboard at the bottom are the vocals coming in left to right. I keep on running back to you. And the keyboard top to bottom on the right side is what pitch map is changing the incoming notes to. These little points allow me to drag the individual notes of the incoming melody up and down. So check this out. So I'm basically able to completely change the melody that the vocal is singing. And I can move all these notes left and right just by clicking these arrows here. 
Here I have these beautiful strings. Without pitch map, they sound like this. Okay, pretty standard, but let's turn pitch map on. Oh, so beautiful. Notice that the main thing that the plugin is doing is just repitching the whole thing down an octave. You can actually do this by holding down shift and clicking on each one of these individual points uh, so that they change to these little arrows pointing up and down. So that's down an octave. That's up. Holy shit. Here I have a pretty simple guitar sound. Put pitch map on it. So as usual, it's kind of repitching the notes, giving it that little glassy texture. But before pitch map, I'm using a vocoder. And the vocoder is basically creating a bunch of noise to kind of destroy the sound entirely. Pitch map is going to look for notes in that noise, and it's going to create super lush harmonies. Here's what it sounds like without the noise. And here's with. Oh my god, that's so beautiful! Wowzers! Now, if you want to be really specific about which notes pitch map is changing your sound to, you can actually route MIDI directly into the plugin. You'll notice I have this simple bass loop made by my boy Eli, which sounds like this. Now underneath that, I have just an empty MIDI track with simple notes coming up and down. And if I look at my ins and outs, I am routing this MIDI track into pitch map, which is living on the original bass track here. Now if I turn pitch map on, check it out. Holy shit, that's totally insane. And I actually took that sound, chopped it up to create this. And that served as the foundation for my drop of the song. Check it out. 